CBS News has learned New York police detectives presented prosecutors with evidence digging into sexual harassment claims allegations. It was about the cover up. I lost I status and prestige because I stood up for myself. But he couldn't be fired. In many ways, her allegation helped ignite a firestorm. Over the course of this video, we will talk about sexual abuse over different time periods and aim to explore and quantify how decisions are made in regards to whether or not to report sexual abuse, particularly in an environment whereby the abuser holds a large amount of power. The case we'll be discussing within this video is of the Hollywood movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. We will discuss how a changing world and consequently changing payoffs led to his victims of abuse coming forward. From the 1990s to 2019, we have witnessed an evolution in the way that sexual assault claims are being dealt with, with changing factors such as a change in sentiment and a rise of social media. We will be using game theory to discuss the payoffs and various games that are relevant to the different parties at the different stages between 1990 and today. Here is the timeline that we will be discussing through the course of this video. First, we'll be looking at Harvey Weinstein's power in the 1990s and discussing a prisoner's dilemma that existed at that time. Then, we'll see how the changing sentiment and an increasing lack of tolerance for sexual assault ultimately encouraged a small number of women to come forward and break their silence. We will discuss this through the eyes of a stag hunt game. Finally, we will see how the rise of social media and the Me Too campaign affected the victim's payoff. We will analyse this situation through the volunteer's dilemma Lastly, we will consider all of the above factors and evaluate the payoff changes in a final deadlock game where we will discuss a shift in the Nash equilibrium and dominant strategy. During this video, while discussing the application of the various strategic games, we will make the overall assumption that all of the victims were telling the truth. For the purpose of this video, we will not analyse the implications of false accusations. Looking at the beginning of the timeline, the 1990s saw Harvey Weinstein, the producer of Pulp Fiction and Shakespeare in Love, at the peak of his career in Hollywood. Weinstein's presence in the industry gave him significant power and wealth, which we now know he used to manipulate others on a large scale. He utilised his power in numerous ways, most notably with actresses, allegedly offering roles in exchange for sexual favours. Additionally, his power fueled a culture of enablers, whereby those who were close to him were aware of the abuse but still did not come forward. Within this part of the timeline, we will be discussing a prisoner's dilemma. A prisoner's dilemma is a simultaneous game whereby each player must take their action without the knowledge of the choices of the other player. The players in this game we consider to be the two victims of Weinstein's assault. The two possible strategies for these victims are either to report or not report the abuse to the media or legal body. Within this game, our main assumption is that during the 1990s, Weinstein had ultimate power that was able to prevent any reports against him going to the media or courts. As we can see in the top left-hand box, if both the victims come forward and report Weinstein's assault, they'll receive a payoff of minus two. This is because, whilst them reporting may plant a seed of doubt about his behaviour within the industry, we believe that his overall power and given the time that they still risk damages to their career aspirations and potentially risk people saying that they're making false accusations. However, both victims reporting the abuse does not match their dominant strategy. The do not report strategy is dominant for both players because regardless of what the other victim does, the do not report strategy will always pro will provide a better payoff. As we can see, if victim 1 or victim 2 report and the other victim does not, they will receive a payoff of minus 1, whereas the party that is reporting alone receives a payoff of minus 4. We believe this to be the case in this situation, that given at the time those coming forward out as victims, particularly alone and in the Hollywood environment, risked having their name tarnished and Weinstein could potentially use his power position to damage their career progression. As a consequence of this, we see the Nash equilibrium being in the bottom right-hand box, where neither of the victims report Weinstein's abuse. As discussed, this is worse than reporting, as they risk being abused again and potentially have to live with the guilt that this could happen to someone else. In conclusion, the individual victims do not report the incidents, and therefore the bottom right-hand box represents the Nash equilibrium. However, the social optimum solution is in the top left-hand box, given that the total sum of the two victims' payoff would be highest if both of the individuals reported the abuse. However, the two players are unlikely to ever choose this option, given that there is uncertainty about the other player's actions. 
One potential limitation of the prisoner's dilemma is its level of simplification. It is a matrix with only four parameters. However, we acknowledge in real-life situations it is likely to be more complex than this, and the victims are likely to have more options than just report and do not report. Additionally, we see that we have only acknowledged payoffs if two victims come forward. However, we acknowledge that if more victims were coming forward at the time, the payoffs would be different. However, whilst the payoffs we have just demonstrated have arguably been this way for many years, the sentiment in society in regards to women's rights and the increasing lack of tolerance for sexual harassment has been building up recently, notably between 1990 and 2017, as demonstrated on the timeline. One of the drivers of the change in sentiment has been the new generation of millennial women, who sees sexual harassment differently to the generation before. As stated by Farrell, this is a generation whose members reveal themselves and talk about themselves. What was taboo is now embraced. In parallel with changing sentiment, there have also been multiple accusations made in the press with regards to powerful men's misconduct, most notably Donald Trump. Farrell stated that this build-up led to many women coming to the end of their tether about how much sexual abuse of women is being trivialized, and the appointment of Trump was seen as the straw that broke the camel's back. This new generation, coupled with the build-up of sexual assault claims, arguably contributed to the encouragement for a few women to come forward to the New York Times to discuss their story in relation to Weinstein. Whether or not the victim should have come forward to the New York Times is where we see the possible application of the stag hunt game. At least two people are needed to expose an individual, and we are discussing the stag hunt between the first two people. This is a simultaneous game between two victims. Each player has two strategies, either to try and bring down Harvey Weinstein or to further their career interests. If only one person comes out with a story, they lose their job and their credibility and get a large negative payoff of minus three. The other person still receives a negative payoff of minus one as they face guilt or continued harassment. In this game, there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria in which both players are cooperating with trying to bring down Weinstein and both players pursuing their career interests. The payoff dominant Nash equilibrium is when they both come forward as this would lead to the prosecution of the harasser and both the victims receive large positive payoffs of four. Their credibility is high at this time as it is the two of them reporting the crime. Thus, it is also the socially optimal outcome. This outcome is Pareto efficient. The risk dominant Nash equilibrium is when both of them stay silent. They both receive a negative payoff of minus one as they keep their jobs and reputation, but are still facing guilt or trauma. This outcome is Pareto inefficient. There is also a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where each player chooses a probability distribution over the set of strategies available to them. However, a limitation of the stag hunt is that this mixed strategy equilibrium is not applicable to the first two victims who could come forward as they will not find themselves in this situation ever again. The accusations of sexual harassment made in the New York Times started a landslide of sexual harassment accusation and admissions, something that had never been seen before on such a large scale. This transition point was fundamental to the shift in payoffs towards the victims, and it's been described as the click moment in which the Weinstein scandal unleashed a tsunami of victims of sexual assault speaking out. We consider the question, how did the Me Too movement get viral and how did it affect the victims' credibility and payoffs? Credibility and going viral are tightly linked, the two being to some extent positively correlated. Indeed, the movement's tipping point arrived at the point of the stag hunt, as described previously, whereby a few came forward to the New York Times and revealed Weinstein's wrongdoings. This provided a starting point whereby many had the opportunity to step forward and speak of the abuse which they have faced. This can be represented by a volunteers game. The hashtag MeToo in many ways represented the volunteers coming forward and being open about the abuse that they have encountered. From world star actresses to anonymous women, people around the world started to join the movement. Moreover, in our celebrity crazed cultures, some of Weinstein's accusers, including Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie, were more celebrated than he is. Their celebrity status helped to make their voice more prevalent and credible. Volunteers Games Assumption Owing to the spread and virality of the Me Too movement, we assume that one person reporting abuse also has a positive payoff. The Volunteers Dilemma is a simultaneous game where each player has two options, to perform an action for the greater good or to free ride. In this case, we identify the two victims as the players and their strategies involve reporting the abuse 
or free riding by staying silent. If one victim reports and the second victim stays silent, they both receive a positive payoff of 5. However, victim 1 receives 5 minus C, whereas victim 2 free rides and receives the entire positive payoff of 5. There is a certain cost C to coming forward. We believe that whilst now in the present day there is an overall positive payoff for reporting abuse given the success of the Me Too movement, there is still some cost involved due to the potential social stigma and emotional stress the victim may incur. This works in the opposite way if victim 2 reports and victim 1 remains silent. In the case that they both report the abuse of, they receive the positive payoff of 5, but they incur cost C, as mentioned before. If both victims stay silent, they receive huge negative payoffs of minus 5, since the abuser is not exposed and the victims are still facing emotional trauma. In the volunteers game, a Nash equilibrium does not exist. This is because both players will always have something to gain if they change their strategy. Limitations. It is hard to quantify C, as this would change on a case-by-case -case basis, and some women may face more social stigma than others depending on the circumstances. We will now discuss the changes from the prisoner's dilemma of the 1990s to the deadlock game of today. The features of the game, in, as described in the prisoner's dilemma previously, remain the same. However, in today's social context, where social abuse is taken very seriously, where the Me Too movement has helped thousands of women come out with their stories and has minimised the cost of speaking out, we believe that Weinstein's victims no longer face the dilemma. Indeed, as you can see, both players' dominant strategy is to report the abuse, giving them a greater payoff of 5 each. If both victims stay silent, they'll receive a huge negative payoff of minus 2 each, since the abuser is not exposed and the victims are still facing emotional trauma. Given that the dominant strategy for both players is to report, the Nash equilibrium has now moved to the point which is also socially optimum. This is why we are now looking at a deadlock game. Through this video, we have discussed how the implications for reporting sexual abuse has changed over different time periods. In the 1990s, we discussed through a prisoner's dilemma how there were no real positive payoffs for victims, either reporting abuse or not reporting abuse. However, the dominant strategy was to not report the abuse. Then, as the new generation started to take a stand, we saw a small group of courageous women come forward to report Weinstein's abuse to the New York Times. The decision to do this we see is represented in the Stack Hunt game. This triggered a major movement, helped through social media, to create a platform whereby women stood up and said, me too. The changing payoffs and ultimate decision as to whether or not to report the abuse we see demonstrated through the volunteer's dilemma. Moving forward, we see that the prisoner's dilemma is no longer a dilemma. Instead, the shift in the payoffs have meant that the dominant strategy for victims of sexual assault is to report the abuse. Lastly, to critically evaluate our underlying assumption that we have discussed in this video, we must think about the possibility of potential false accusations and what the dominant strategies now are between the two periods of the 1990s and 2019. Here we are looking at a payoff tree analysing the payoffs for an individual who has either been harassed or not harassed, and they have two options of how to deal with this, either report or not report. In the 1990s, we see that whether the victim has been harassed or not harassed, their dominant strategy is to stay quiet and not reporting yields the highest payoff. This is a pooling equilibrium where everyone chooses not to report. In 2019, we see that this has changed. The dominant strategy for a victim who is harassed is to report the abuse. If the victim is not harassed, their dominant strategy is to not report. Thus, in today's world, we see two different strategies depending on whether the victim is harassed or not harassed. This is a separating equilibrium. With the rise of the Me Too movement, we see how the payoff has now shifted in favour of victims. But there are still huge costs, we believe, associated of making false accusations. And therefore, the dominant strategy, if you're not harassed, is not to report still.